What you guys got another video here for you in this one we're looking at 10 ways to fix slow boot times in Windows 10 so let's get started with this one now this is quite a common uh, problem with Windows 10 I'm going to go through some of the most common things that cause uh, slow boot up time so first one is disabling the fast boot now this is plagued Windows 10 with slow boot up time so to disable it we're going to go to start then settings then go up to where it says system and then once you click on system you want to go over to where it says uh, power and sleep then on the right hand side advanced power settings and inside here you'll see a bunch of other settings inside here we're going to go up to the top left hand side where it says choose what the power button does so we're going to go into here and you'll see down here is all grayed out and this is because we need to enable it so we're just going to quickly go to change settings that are commonly unavailable and click on this one here and you'll see a tick box in turn the fast startup recommended now turn this off because sometimes this does cause a problem and causes slow boot up times now if you don't see the fast boot option which is your fast startup option then what you need to do is right click on the start button and open windows powershell with administrator privileges and from here we're going to type in here power cfg and this is power config here and then space forward slash and you need to type in hibernate and then you need to do a space and then type in on and then push enter once that's done you should be able to go back into your settings and take the tick out of turn on uh, fast startup recommended take the tick out of that okay i know it says recommended but you just need to remove it OK, so next up, what we're going to do here is go down to the search box here and type in here MS config. Now, this is quite a common one and it's still used today. So open up the system configuration and we're going to go to the startup tab up here, open task manager, and you should see a bunch of programs that are starting up. Now, if you've got a long list of startup programs inside here, what you need to do is disable these. I've already disabled quite a few of mine and to disable these, you could just right click on the item that you want to disable and uh, just click disable that simple so just right click you should see it here and hit disable or you can just click on it and then click disable in the bottom right hand corner it's that simple and that should disable that item so just go through there and disable which ones you want next up we're going to go down to the search box and type in here performance and we're going to open up adjust the appearance and performance of windows now this is for virtual memory settings now you don't really need to be doing too much in here so go to the advanced tab and uh, go into the virtual memory settings now you should see a tick in automatically manage paging file size for all drives paging file sizes for each drive now windows is controlling this now down the bottom you should see minimum allowed recommended and currently allocated now if yours looks like mine then you can leave this alone but if you've got an issue which is known to windows where the currently allocated is higher than the recommended and it's higher by quite a considerable amount then you can remove the tick from automatically manage paging file size for all drives and paging file size for each drive make sure it's on the c drive and then go to custom size here now what you want to do here if your recommended size is 4981 megabytes what you want to do is just take this down a little bit and you can make it say for instance 3000 or 3500 or something like that if you're seeing figures like mine and then set the maximum size to the recommended setting which is 4981 megabytes as you can see here and once you've done that you can click set and you should be good to go reboot your system and uh, go back into there and you should see it been set into position there and it will ask you to reboot okay now you can set these to 1.5 times uh, the size of the memory and that's what basically those settings should be so let's click OK here and restart the system okay so once you've rebooted go down to the search box and type in here MS config we're going to go back into the system configuration tool and once we're in here we're going to go to the boot tab now this is really geared up for the dual boot systems and stuff like that if you've got a dual boot system it will be listed there and you'll see a timeout section with 30 seconds you can reduce this down to speed up how long the uh, menu is on the screen for so if you want to make this lower you can do whether it be five seconds 10 seconds whatever you want to set that to 
I'm just going to set this to say 10 and just show you how to do it. If you've got a dual boot system, it will make it a little bit faster. You're probably not going to see vast amounts of speed on a single um, Windows operating system drive, but it's good for those people that are running dual boot systems. If you want to find out how fast your boot up time is, you can right click on the taskbar and go to the, your task manager. And you should see here last boot up time or BIOS time. And this is your 20.7 seconds boot up time. And you can keep an eye on this and this will give you an idea of how long it takes to boot up. Next up is your graphics drivers. So you can see this graphics driver is out of date. Now having out of date graphics drivers can sometimes cause a uh, slow boot up time. So it's always good to have these updated. Now updating this is pretty simple. If you've got the experience installed and you've signed in, you can click on this and it should install. And you, or you can go to the actual um, menu system of the a GeForce experience and it will allow you to update it. Now, if you haven't got the login details, then it won't let you uh, update it this way and you will need to go to Nvidia's website or just sign in with an account to update it this way. Okay, I'll show you the other way as well to do it. But this way is for the Nvidia GeForce experience uh, setup. So go to the Nvidia website here and put in your graphics card details and hit the download button. This will download the uh, executable file for your NVIDIA drivers and you can then uh, go ahead and install these on the system. It will remove the old drivers and then install the latest updated drivers on your computer and if you're running AMD systems you will have to go to the AMD website and do the same thing and keep their drivers updated. It's pretty straightforward and easy to do but it's always a good problem solver for slow boot up times with graphics issues. Another thing is your uh, hard drive. If you've got a hard drive on the system, maybe a mechanical drive or something like that, you want to check the health of that. And you can do this with Crystal Disk Info. It will tell you whether the drive is starting to fail or if there's any problems or bad sectors with that drive. You can also uh, check your solid state drives on here as well. You can click on this little arrow if you've got more than one drive and it will let you see the solid state uh, drive there as well. And this could be your NVMe drive. You can see it gives you all the information, tells me the drive is in good health, it's 100%, and it tells me the temperature. And it tells me if there's any issues, and it tells me the power on counts and stuff like that. Now, another thing you want to do is open up your command prompt by typing CMD, and you can run this as administrator. Once the command prompt's open, you can just type in here CHK DSK and just run this and see whether there's any problems with your drive. Sometimes it will tell you there's a problem or whether there's any trouble with the installation of there. You can see here bad sectors, none found, and also it'll just do a quick scan of the drive here. And this just gives you some useful information just to make sure everything is running okay. And you can see Windows has been scanned and the file system had no problems found there. And that's important to make sure that you've got no problems with your operating system. If there is, then you'll need to fix those. Okay, let's move on to the next one, which is going into your antivirus software. Now, if you're running Windows Defender, I'll show you with Windows Defender here. Go into uh, Windows Security here and you can then see we have got no problems with our antivirus program. There's no detections of malware. You can do a quick scan here just to make sure there's no malware on the system. A full scan is recommended. And if you haven't got Windows Defender and you've got another antivirus program or anti uh, malware program like Malwarebytes uh, Premium or something like that, just run a full scan of your drive to make sure there is no infections on there. This can slow the system up if you've got malware on the system and it's always advisable just to do a quick check to make sure that you have no malware on the system. Next up, we're going to go down to the search box here. I'm going to type features. Open up the term Windows features on or off. And inside here, this is a new feature that has been added to Windows. There's been a known issue with the Windows subsystem for Linux. And uh, if you've got this enabled, by default, it's not enabled. But if it's enabled, then you want to remove the tick from that box, OK? Uh, so if you're using this feature and you are experiencing issues, then remove the tick, click OK, and reboot and see if the problem goes away. If it doesn't, then you can put the tick back in and carry on using it. Now, finally, one of the biggest upgrades you can do to your system is give yourself a solid state drive or new NVMe drive. These are super fast and they replace mechanical drives 
uh, as your main operating system drive so if you're not using one of these then i'd advise you to get one of these they're pretty cheap and affordable and it's probably the biggest and fastest boost that you can do to a windows operating system anyway that's going to be about it for this video that's 10 ways to speed up the boot up times of windows 10 my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk hope this one helps you out i shall see you again for another video tomorrow bye for now now if you haven't subscribed yet hit the red subscribe button and then hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos